many people have difficulty, but we do have some very smart people, you know, here in the school system. We've always had some, but you'll always have the students that are not as fortunate. Some do not have um, help for their own help at home, mm -hmm. and some, you know, are just not interested, you know. They'd rather be playing or watching television or what have you. But you'll, you'll always have that, even back when I was in school. We had to do, you know, work in the fields, and so when we had opportunities to go to school, the majority of the students really worked hard because they wanted to be able to grow up and get an education and go someplace else. Do something other than farming. Mm -hmm. But even in those days, you had some students mm -hmm. did not have the opportunity to go to school as I and some of the other people did. Mm -hmm. They had to spend more time in the fields, you know, gathering their crops because, especially if their parents were not landowners, you know, themselves. Now, I was one of the fortunate ones. Uh, my parents own their own property, and so we had opportunities to go to school. But sometimes other children did not mm -hmm. have that opportunity. But you've always had, you've always had people that was interested in education and did well in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From this area, we have a doctor that works here in the county. They graduated from the high school here in the Gap. We have another doctor that works in New County, I believe. They graduated from Kippa County High School here in the Gap. We have a lawyer that works for the uh, the government, the uh, Justice Court, not the Justice Court. What is it? Uh, just come from from out of Washington, the uh, department, uh -huh. Justice Department, Justice Department, mm -hmm. that graduated from here in Kemba County, and you have people with all types of mm -hmm. positions, uh, pharmaceutical representatives, and just other, you know, just all types of mm -hmm. jobs. That and most of them, the rural area here. Have, have most of the people who have been uh, successful left Kemper County, though? Well, not all of them, no. So some are still here? Yes, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. the doctor that is still mm -hmm. here, working every day, is one of them. And in those days, we had to leave, many of them had to leave to find mm -hmm. suitable positions based on their professions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about diabetes, okay? Um, when, um, when you hear the word diabetes, what do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I've been knowing about diabetes ever since I was a child because it runs in my father's family. He was a diabetic and most, if not all, of his siblings were diabetic. Mm -hmm. So, I know it's a chronic disease, but you can live a normal, healthy life if you manage it well. And, and do you have diabetes? Yes, I'm diabetic. I was diagnosed in the, uh, around 1997, 98, somewhere in that area. And uh, my father and all his siblings, they took insulin. But by the time I was diagnosed, they had pills that people could take. And I was borderline, they say. And I was on or medication for several years. And I was managing it real well because mm -hmm. I, I cut out certain foods, uh, like cornbread, the one that I, I've always loved. Uh, the leafy green vegetables. I started eating more leafy green vegetables. 
cut down on my sweets and things. And uh, I did well. I not only lost the weight, I controlled my diabetes mm -hmm. on insulin up until I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma and had to go through chemo. Mm -hmm. And that was when I, I start, had to start taking insulin. Mm -hmm. And I've been on insulin ever since. So, um, and how long has that been then? Now? That was in 2000. Okay, so it's been a while then. Yes. And how are you doing with the diabetes? I'm doing, I tell people, I, my diabetes is just as good to me as I am to it. It depends on what I eat and how I eat depends on how my diabetes is. Mm -hmm. I, I do very well too. Really, it's doing good. And and what about uh, getting exercise or activity? How how is that for you? I don't get as much exercise as I used to because of joints and uh, I have deteriorated knees. I can't walk. I have back problems, but I do get up and down throughout the day. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to do a little housework and what have you. And that is the most of my exercise, unless I come to town, you know, and I walk mm -hmm. as much as I can, mm -hmm. but I cannot do a lot of walking, mm -hmm. just to be honest. All right. Well, I understand mm -hmm. that. Um, how, how uh, do you live by yourself now, or do you? Uh... No, I, my husband and my son. Okay. Yes. So, uh, how important is it that family understands what you need to do to take care of yourself? I think it, it's very important because, you know, if your family understands uh, the type of foods you need to eat, they're more likely not to bring in a lot of things that you would love to eat and, you know, that would be tempting to you to cause you to eat the wrong thing and run your sugar up. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that your family understands the types of foods you need to eat. And it's good when they will learn to like the foods that you, mm -hmm. you need to mm -hmm. eat, you know. Who does and the shopping at your house? My husband does, and her son does most of it, but I do sometimes go shopping. You give them a list? Not always, sometimes. Okay, so when they come home, do they have lots of snacky things <coughs> that you shouldn't have? Well, we, or maybe them either? Well, we don't. We have more than we should because we have grandchildren that comes in, and we try to keep something there for them. And then my son carries a lot of stuff in his lunch. Mm -hmm. But I tend not to eat a lot of it. I really do. Okay. And um, do you think... Um, um, sometimes I think about uh, routines, those habits that we get into. Um, and with diabetes, you have to have certain kinds of routines, particularly around eating um, things. It, do you think it's easy for your family to support you in doing the right thing for you? Do they try to give that support to you, or do you just kind of, you're the woman of the house, so do you just do what you want to and they kind of do what they want, or? No. Yeah, I think they really do try to support, you know, what I, uh, the things that I uh, eat, I uh, should, should not eat. But now, <laughs> my daughter always tells me, say, you're different. You're not a Marco. You're only different from any other diabetes I know. Diabetics I know because you all pretty much eat what you want, but we have to eat it in moderation, you know. Uh, like I said, I've always loved leafy green vegetables, but now I cannot eat the leafy green vegetables because I'm on a blood thinner, because of medical problems, mm -hmm. or whatever. So. Most of the food that I have to eat now are really not good for diabetes. But Challenging yeah. when you have so, so more than I, one disease that yeah, you have to to, to deal about. with. Mm -hmm. So, but I, but I manage really well, and 
uh, just recently this year, uh, I was on, my doctor had me on insulin. I was taking a lot of insulin at one time, plus a pill. And it got to a place that uh, I said, uh, you know, my diabetes was doing so well. I took my pill every morning, and I was not taking a lot of insulin. I didn't need it because I checked my sugar twice a day, mm -hmm. at least. And sometimes if I feel a little funny, you know, a little sick, but mm -hmm. I check it again, you know, to see if it was too low. And uh, I told my doctor about it, so he took me off the pill and lowered my doses for of insulin. I went from like. 43 units in the morning to 20, and like from 38 to 10 at night, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing well, because now I know I'm not eating quite as much mm -hmm. because of the medication that I'm taking. Right. I don't have that great of an appetite. And of course, the less insulin you take, the less you want to eat. Mm -hmm. I discovered the more insulin you take, the more you want to eat. And the more you eat, the more insulin you have to take. <laughs> so, so I'm doing real well. Now sometimes I'll check it and I'm eating the wrong thing and I might be up to 100 and 90, you know. And even if it's at night, I still take that regular 10 units. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, it's back down within the normal range, mm -hmm. most of it. Good. Good. So um, the fact that I'm not, like I say, eating as much, and the fact that I do get up and move around throughout the day, and you know, like I don't go walking, but I do move, I think it's helping me to control my diabetes. Are there things that friends or neighbors or people in the community can do to help support you or other people with diabetes? I don't really know. Uh, I know quite a few of my neighbors have di uh, diabetics themselves, and I guess we kind of like on the same level of always knowing. We sometimes discuss mm -hmm. our diabetic situation. We go to different doctors and we discuss the things that our doctor said, and you know at our visits, you know. And that way we can help each other, you know. For example, like uh, my friend had told me, say, uh, you know, my doctor says, uh, make sure you always dry between your toes when you sure. take a bath and stuff. Well, I, <laughs> I'm not so sure whether my doctor had told me that or not, and I've read literature is that your doctor is supposed to mm -hmm. check your feet every time you go and check mm -hmm. your legs. So, you know, we talk about stuff like that, and I guess in that manner, we help each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you think, um, I'm, I'm kind of guessing that these are women friends? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, do you think men do the same thing? In the community? No, that I'm not sure. I can't say possibly, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't let you in on their secrets, huh? Yeah, I'm always trying to figure out the men's secrets, you know. It's a little harder to, to figure out. But now I have a brother that, you know, we discuss, he discuss his with, you know, when we're just talking. Mm -hmm. We talk about, and he has done real well for a long time because he does exercise, and he get up and walk every morning a couple of miles and what have you. And he has always been able to stay on the pill and has not had to go on the insulin. But and my sister, my older sister, I was diagnosed a few years after I was, and she's on the pill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, and she doesn't get out and do as much walking and stuff, but just doing her housework and going back and forth to town, you know, walking around Walmart, you know, burn up a bunch of, <laughs> you burn up a bunch of calories. That's just, right. Just walking around Walmart. Uh -huh. so. And she's been able to maintain 
It was in the levels that her doctor mm -hmm. had one. prescribed use on the pill. And like I say, it was not until I started taking chemo that I had to go on insulin. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, let me just ask a little different kind of question. You think that there are things that people in the community can do to help support um, uh, people with diabetes or help prevent diabetes? Well, the only thing I know that in the community that could do to help people with diabetes is like if you're having a community gathering and maybe make sure that your menu consists of more healthier foods. Mm -hmm. We know that most times when you are having community gathering and stuff, you have a lot of sweets and a lot of fatty foods or spicy foods and such as that. So maybe if the menus were planned more healthy, Wise. Mm -hmm. That would be one way the community could help. What was the second part? The, the idea of preventing, or the things that, that the community can do to help prevent diabetes. The only thing I know is to talk to people about the disease, to educate people about the disease and the dangers of catching the disease, and to educate people on what they can do to pre properly prevent their getting the mm -hmm. disease, you mm -hmm. know. Proper diet and uh, well-balanced diet and not a lot of fatty. And it doesn't really come, you know, we used to think it came from sugar and eating a lot of sweets. But it's not necessarily from eating a lot of sweets, but a lot of starchy foods, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they may have a do a more balanced diet by including more vegetables in their meals. Because there are some people just do not mm -hmm. eat vegetables. They are meat and potatoes and sweets, and mm -hmm. they don't do the vegetables. Mm -hmm. What's a standard dinner here in Mississippi? What would be a favorite dinner? <laughs> oh, well, <clears throat> now in Mississippi, where we, where I grew up, and even today, we do do a lot of vegetables: greens, peas, corn, string beans. Those are the main vegetables we mm -hmm. have here in Kemper County that people eat: uh, turnip greens, collard greens, cabbage, peas, corn, mm -hmm. and okra, and string beans, butter beans. Those, those are our vegetables, and most people, most people eat them, you know. Most people, we don't have as many people planting orange today mm -hmm. as they did 20 years ago. But people used to have their own gardens, and they grew their own vegetables here. But like I say, you have fewer and fewer people with gardens. But the people that are able to plant you know, big fields, they can sell these. They plant the big mm -hmm. fields of peas and stuff. And people buy them mm -hmm. and put them in their freezer. Mm -hmm. So we still, in this area, we still eat a lot of vegetables. When we can get them, and, we do. And they're relatively locally grown yes. things, uh -huh. too, that, yes. that you share, at least in the season. Mm -hmm. Do you have a long growing season here? It's pretty, yeah, because Usually, people start peas and string beans and stuff. They usually start coming off like in June, mid June, mm -hmm. and sometimes go all the way over into late August. Mm -hmm. Depending on the temperature, I mean the rain season and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It takes quite a bit of moisture to grow string beans. Yeah. And uh, but you can grow peas in pretty dry weather mm -hmm. and stuff. And of course, the corn season is very short. Mm -hmm. But for most of uh, yes. I can. Okay. Um, you worked in a school and 
probably lots of knowledge about um, local schools. What, what, what's some of the things that you think that, that could be done in schools to help young people and maybe their families um, begin to think m more carefully about their health and being well? As a, again, I say education on the types of food that the families fix now. Today, we have more fast foods. We have families where mothers and fathers are working. In my day, I can't say my mother didn't work because she did, <laughs> probably more than anybody else because she was always cooking and cleaning right. and all those things, but she did not go to the field. She did not have a factory job. So she cooked, you know, we mm -hmm. had vegetables every day mm -hmm. and stuff. Today, you know, mothers are coming in their time and they stick a pizza in the oven or they pop tarts in the microwave or something like that in the toaster. And children are just not getting enough fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. They're eating a lot of processed foods, mm -hmm. which is probably contributing to uh, juvenile diabetes. Mm -hmm. What about um, yeah. cooking? Do you think young people know how to cook today? Many probably do not. They, I, I have to admit, probably more people do not know how to mm -hmm. cook today than a few years ago. And you're involved here, some with the extension? Somewhat. Okay, well, I'm a volunteer homemaker. Okay. Uh, do you do much with cooking? I don't cook as much as I used to. Like I said, I worked every day and I came home and cooked the and I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean you, yourself, but, but with the homemakers, do you do emphasize things around cooking? Yes, they do. Uh -huh. And they even have a program, and I don't really know the name of it, where they're teaching children how to cook. They just put on a workshop a few days ago. My granddaughter participated in. She was ten years. She's ten mm -hmm. years old, and they was teaching them how to cook various recipes here through the extension. 